listening to the spot. Fellas, I'm ready to get up and do my thing. I want to get into it, man, you know. Let me tell you something, man. These are everyday common for working people out there. These laborers. You play the game when you're working for them. Who are you talking to like that? I love hip hop. I do love hip hop. Mm -hmm. But if it's not telling me something I can associate with or even reminisce or rap about with them, I, can, I don't understand the, the method of their what they're doing. And my concern is because I have three children. Mm -hmm. And when I sit back and I listen to the kids and I look at the kids vibing to the music, that's not saying nothing. I mean, even even if the police was saying something because they had a they were saying why they were saying that. Mm -hmm. But the music of today, I, I really don't know how the outcome is going to affect my children. Well, music as a cultural expression has a bi-directional impact on people. We influence the music. The music influences us. So when you hear artists say that their music does not contribute to the social ills we have, they're totally wrong. Especially from a psychological and a spiritual level, music and images are the language of the unconscious. You can program a mind better with sound than you ever could just with language itself. That's why it's so easy to learn music because it's put to a rhythmic beat. Mm -hmm. That rhythm is mathematics. And, you know, the, the, the whole spinal cord operates based on the mathematics of rhythm. So it's alchemy. It's alchemy. It's no such thing as my music has no impact. That's right. total nonsense. Right. You know, it has a severe impact. Now, your music may not have caused the problems. You know, there was black on black crime. There was poverty. There was gun violence before rap music. But rap music has certainly helped to glamorize it. Right. It took negative social ills in the community and made them popular. And nobody can absolve themselves from that. Not Jay-Z, not 50 Cent. Y'all helped to popularize killing, whether you want to admit it or not. You helped to popularize drug selling. Right. And the sad thing about it is many of you have never done the things that you rap around in your music, but right. you're not being honest with the children. So they don't see it as entertainment. They see this as actual life, even though it was falsified. Here's the situation, and I think this is a problem with black folk in general, regardless of the art form we're talking about. We don't value our cultural products. Hmm. And on top of not valuing our cultural products, that means we're willing to let anybody take them and exploit them and use them for whatever agenda that they have. And when we look at music, the creativity, the positivity that once served as the foundation for hip hop is no longer there. Right. You know, it's no longer creative. Every song has the same message I'm rich, you're not. You know, it's the whole hip hop industry just about, right. I, you know, um, and if you make me mad, I'll kill you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's basically the message. It may have a different beat, a different artist, a different set of words to explain it, but it's largely the same. And I think that hip hop began to take a negative turn for the worse when artists were willing to sign to the majors. For a while, you couldn't get a major. Uh, you could not signed to a major label you know run dmc broke through they did right. then ll right. and others came but for a while they ignored it until they saw the economic potential and when we signed we gave up our freedom mm -hmm. to direct the art form right. it was more pure when the albums were sold out the back of the trunks right. i'm saying all this to say that although hip-hop was created by black people it is ran by white people mm -hmm. and there's no separating from that and i think the positive artists also play a role in this because many of them are not courageous enough to constructively criticize the major artists who are the main purveyors of the verbal filth. Mm -hmm. So you'll hear Common or others who art form may be more positive, but then when people ask them about the Jeezys and the Little Waynes, because they feel they have to be loyal. It has to be political. You, you see, I'm not going to say what is not hip hop mm -hmm. but y'all keep on saying gangster rap is not hip hop but you will not identify who the gangster rappers are whose messages is not hip hop so there's a contradiction because on the one hand you're saying there's a distinction between hip hop and rap but you will not dare identify the artists that are not representative of hip hop music there's a fear of identifying who the quote unquote sellouts are in the music game because they hold the power. Mm -hmm. And it's popularly known if you upset Jay-Z, he can get your album pushed back 50 years. You right. know, So they're afraid 
just like we are in the regular community, to speak truth to power because of the consequences. You know, if I speak out against Kanye, you know, I may never be able to get a concert on this particular avenue. I might never get that Pepsi commercial. Right. So even the the popular or the positive rappers are afraid to check the negative rappers because at the end of the day, they want some of the same shine that they got. Right. You know? Well, and another thing, too, when it comes to music, here's another thing. We have to be a little bit more responsible for what we let our children listen to. You know, because I, li I talk to a lot of black fathers, you know, and they say, well, I don't hide music from my children. This is the way the world operates. But that music is also conditioning your son's mind. I mean, you're letting them hear, you know, bitch and whore. And you're saying you're doing it from an educational standpoint. Well, I don't know how much time you need to spend on bitch and whore. Right. You know, and it just looks like it's an excuse, mm -hmm. you know, to let your child get away with music that's conditioning his unconscious to disrespect folk. And I think the music now is one of the main socializing and education vehicles in our community. You know, parents always tell me, I didn't raise my daughter to talk like that. I didn't raise my son. No, but the music did. Right. You know, the music has more influence over our children than the family does, the church, and the school. And I think there needs to be a take back the music campaign where we redirect our children's energy away from the mainstream negative messages to something that's positive 